Recap. The people of the Six Nations, also known by the French term, Iroquois Confederacy, call themselves the Hau de No Sao Ne, Ho de No E Show Ne, meaning people building a long house, Lenape, Leni Lenape, meaning, we, the people, original people, Natiko, meaning magic. Located in the northeastern region of North America, originally the Six Nations was five and included the Mohawks, Oneidas, Onondagas, Cayugas, and Senecas. The Sixth Nation, the Tuscaroras, migrated into Iroquois country in the early 18th century. Together these peoples comprise the oldest living participatory republic on earth. Their story, and governance truly based on the consent of the governed, contains a great deal of life promoting intelligence for those of us not familiar with this area of American history. The original United States Representative Republic, fashioned by such central authors as Benjamin Franklin aka Benjamin Banacher aka Ben Bay, and Thomas Jefferson, drew from this confederacy of nations, practiced by the six nations for over 800 years. Here is a major piece of American history purposely left out of the history books of the ruling class. These people known as Moors, Moors, came together amongst their many nations and established a government to include their European brothers. The people of the six nations, the people of the United States, would forever be a free and sovereign people holding the legislative power of the government. Their European brothers who would form the Mamluk administration were put in the position of the executive office of this three-branch government. On June 11, 1776, while the question of independence was being debated, the European Mamluks were formally invited into the meeting hall of the Continental Congress. There a speech was delivered, in which they were addressed as brothers, and told of the delegates wish that the friendship between them would continue as long as the sun shall shine, and the waters run. The speech also expressed the hope that the new Americans and the Iroquois act as one people and have but one heart. After this speech, an Onondaga chief gave Hancock a tribal name, and he was renamed Karandwon, or the Great Tree. With the Iroquois chiefs inside the halls of Congress, the impact of Iroquois on the framers is unmistakable. History is indebted to Charles Thompson, an adopted Delaware, whose knowledge of and respect for more American Indians is reflected in the attention that he gave to this ceremony in the records of the Continental Congress. The Great Seal. The eagle symbolizing the Iroquois Confederacy held six arrows, one for each of the six nations. The eagle on the American seal holds 13 arrows, one for each of the 13 original states. From the U.S. government's official booklet on the Great Seal, describing the lengthy search for a suitable design, the Congress still was not satisfied. On June 13, 1782, it presented the collected work and recommendations of the three committees to Charles Thompson, Secretary of Congress. Thompson was not an artist, but he was a practical man with the ability to get things done. He selected the best features of all the previous designs, assigning prominence to the eagle. Feeling that the new nation's symbol should be strictly American, however, Thompson replaced Barton's crested imperial eagle with the Native American bald eagle, wings extending downward as though in flight. He placed in the left talon a bundle of arrows and in the right, the olive branch. Providence. Note the connection between the seal's design and Thompson's deep familiarity with Indian culture. Most Indian tribes hold the eagle sacred. They don't feel the same about Ben Franklin's choice for a national symbol, the wild turkey. Many Native American tribes or nations formed loose defensive confederations which held together briefly or for a long time. The Iroquois, a confederation of first five and then six Native American nations in the northeastern United States, however, formed what was an anomalous confederation that would form much of the basis for the American invention of government. This was a powerful confederation of sovereign nations held together by a constitution that based itself on the structure of the confederation and its decision-making apparatus rather than on the charisma or power of individuals. This would then become the model that the framers of the constitution would turn to in designing a nation that was, in theory, a set of sovereign nations, the United States. Sometime between 1570 and 1600, Dekanawida, a Huron living among the Seneca, worked out a treaty of alliance with Hiawatha, an Onondaga living among the Mohawk. This alliance would include three other nations, so that the Iroquois League at its foundation included the Seneca, the Mohawk, the Cayuga, the Oneida, and the Onondaga. In 1722, the League was joined by the Tuscarora. Originally occupying only northern New York, the League would expand by alliance and conquest to control an area from southern Canada to Kentucky north to south, and eastern Pennsylvania to Ohio east to west. During the American Revolution, the League split apart. 
the Oneida and Tuscarora sided with the Americans, while the others allied themselves with Britain. The Brutish Moors The United States took revenge in 1779 which resulted in the Second Treaty of Fort Stanwix, 1784, which officially disbanded the League. Take a look at a $1 bill. Notice that on one side of it, it is black and on the other side it is green. Black is the color or non-color of death hence the dead president on it. On the reverse side of it the green is symbolic of life. Notice on this side there is placed what is called an obverse and a reverse seal of the United States. In the middle there is the word one. Study this for a moment then read on. Let me now reveal to you what the eye was open to see. When showing this side of the dollar to people I asked them to tell me what it is they see starting from left to right. They all began by saying in different orders, I see a pyramid with an all-seeing eye on top of it, Anuit Coeptus written above it and Nuvos Ordo Seclorum written below it. The pyramid has 13 steps and on the other side I see an eagle with a constellation of stars above its head, 13 arrows in one hand and an olive branch in the other, with a shide of its chest, the words E Pluribus Unum and a cloud. Everyone I asked this question to all said similarly the same thing. The best place to hide something is right in front of one's face. First, the eye knew that one's ancestors wrote in glyphs. Glyphs, pictures can speak a thousand words. To interpret the glyphs requires knowledge of the symbols involved. Secondly, remembering to relate everything to one's body as the great spirit had spoken to the eye, one began to interpret the meanings. The reverse, notice at the very bottom it says, great seal. Great implies power and authority hence this seal is the chief. The term pyramid comes from the term pyra, meaning fire, as in pyromaniac, and mid, meaning middle, so pyramid translated from symbolism is fire in the middle. This fire in the middle stands erect on the earth. In relation to the body, the place of the fire in the middle is between the legs and it is the male which stands erected there. Note on the seal that the pyramid is on earth, the body, hence the all-seeing eye as it is called, is the sperm that he releases into a whole new universe, heaven, space, the final frontier, formed out of the dust of the earth. At the moment of ejaculation when sperm is released, it carries with it all the data or DNA of the father. Therefore above it, the all-seeing eye, is written Anuit Coeptus interpreted, God has favored us or God blessed, the sperm, and below is written Novus Ordo Seclorum, new order of the world, from the father. Well of course it is a new world order because at this point the father's sperm is mating with an egg from mother and it will become more, go further than the father because it will become of the DNA of the father and the mother. That sperm carries the consciousness the father spoke and thought at that time of release and is mated with the consciousness of the mother and something more is created. That seal, the great seal, is the seal of life, of succession, of Solomon's temple, soul of Mon's thought, who will always be more, 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 forever more, amor, Amor, Amon. The obverse impression from 1782 die. This seal known as an armorial achievement depicts the rising of the sun. In ancient Kemet you have the story of Heru symbolized by what ones call the hawk. To better understand this story pick up a book on Egypt concerning the story of Heru. The ancient Moors used what we still use today and that is the phoenix bird because as ancient myth has it, the phoenix dies and then resurrects from its own ashes. It is a bird of spiritual significance. In its talons you see in the right an olive branch and in the left arrows. This symbolically means peace and war, on its chest you see a crest. In heraldry, the crest is one's nation as its flag, one's shield of armor to protect oneself from attack. The crest on the phoenix is the flag of this nation, the Moorish, United States, the phoenix head has. Crown on it and above it is a constellation of stars, the Hideon cross made up of 13 six-pointed stars enclosed by a cloud. This is the title to this government. Behold, I commits with clouds, and all eyes shall see. Who hasn't seen a dollar bill? This is symbolic of the fez which holds inside of it the knowledge of the heavens or spiritual planes, and the dual opposite, the earthly material world. But let's go back to the olive branch. As Moors ones are taught that the olive branch symbolizing peace also symbolizes the physical in the form of the Koran. The number of leaves are also symbolic of degrees, which could be explained by any mason or studied more. The arrows symbolizing war also symbolizes the law. The arrows also have in their number symbolic interpretation, as so do the number of feathers on each side. Moorish ancestors wore these feathers on ceremonial occasions. 
In a civil environment disputes are worked out in tribal meetings or modernly, courts of law. The crest symbolizing the nation and also the dress. There are 12 stars in the cloud which form a picture of two pyramids, one pointing up and the other pointing down. A Merkaba. Mer being essence, Ka being the spirit, Ba being the soul. The essence of the spirit and soul. The true trinity. This gives each pyramid six stars. The picture depicted, the Gideon cross, has six points and is made up of all 12 stars, hence six above, six below, and six as a whole. 666 the number of man, and the hexagon in the center, the building block of this reality. So, Moors come looking towards peace, the olive branch, but ready for physical or spiritual war with the knowledge of the heavens and the earth in their heads as a testament unto their father spirit forevermore. Why a pyramid? The ancestors knew that the shape of the human cells in their natural 3D environment was a pyramid shape. So this symbol also symbolizes the blood of the father, the originator or creator. This, the blood, is the beginning, the middle, and the end, the first and the last. The blood never lies. This blood that flows through your veins is the gift from the Creator, the Alpha and the Omega and everyone on this planet shares this single substance which ties us all together as humanity from one source, our Creator, the Great Spirit, Aradia, Allah, etc. This side of the dollar is printed with green ink. Green is the color of nature hence life, Mother's nature. In the middle of the two seals we see the word one. In the Bible it states that in the middle of the Garden of Eden stood a tree bearing two manners of fruit. Take the dollar and if you're a male, place it on your lap. Now look at it esoterically. In the middle, one, there is your phallus with two nuts, the greenery being your pubic hairs. To swear, testify, on one's life to tell the truth, is to swear on your testicles, your life continuing, hence the testimony or testament. This region is of the producing of the sperm, one's offspring, the continuation of your bloodline. Take the dollar and place it on a table before you. Stand at attention but raise your arms out to shoulders width. In the middle there is one, you. To the left you have where the positive energy flows to the body and to the right you have the negative energy, hence the olive branch and the arrows. Looking left, you are looking at peace, the olive branch, but ready for war on your right side. You centered in the middle possess the harmony of the opposites. How do you maintain the harmony? Take the same dollar and place it at your eye level. In the middle there is one, the third eye, and two eyes on each side thereof. Hence, if thy eye be single then thy whole body be full of light. The single eye or third eye, is the door of the seventh chakra hence the circle seven, that red drop of blood surrounded by space, the white light, which opens like a mandela. This is where, in God we trust, to make the right decisions. This is the seal of the United States, that supreme court where all its members are sovereign, we, the people of the United States. Pause and read. To see with the physical eyes is to see that which is physical. But to see with the spiritual eye is to see that which is hidden in plan sight, and in this case, the symbol, ism. Under the seals you have bags, just like under the eyes, and in these bags the terms the great seal and of the United States, the right and left eye of Heru. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever seen an embosser that embosses on two sides? No, that doesn't exist. So then if you were to believe that these seals are one seal called the obverse and reverse then why have you not seen the reverse impression on anything and only a picture of it on the one dollar bill? Because it's not a seal that has an obverse and reverse but rather it is a symbol for something else. And this something else was put on the one dollar, the alpha, with geo. Washington on the front, for the one with the eye to see its meaning. That's Madonna, think, mystic masters. That other seal, the Great Seal, belongs to, originates from and tells the story of, the Moorish American. FDR put the Great Seal on the $1 bill in 1935. Note, this is an example of the first $1 as it originally was cast, check the position of the seals. And this was the front of that bill. Bill, a debt, something to be paid at stated value. How many bills do you have? Can debt own debt? Your corporate government passes bills in their Congress, in your name, hoax. Do you have $1 bills, $100 bills, $1,000 bills, or $1,000,000 bills? The question is, how much do you owe as a corporate employee? 